Hello everyone, I'm going to make the second part of our lab at this point, some videos. So I'm under week one and I'm going to go down to the lab tab, which once again, if you're watching this video, you've already done this, but I thought I would go over the blood and just this particular video will be just the blood cells. So there's the outline, it says blood lab, uh, looks like this, oops, it's got uh, the heading at the top and then here is a PowerPoint now this is one of the I usually kind of pride myself on my pictures that I have They're usually really good this is my weakest one and it you know some of the pictures are okay the padlet for this section which for some reason on our on our blackboard page is not showing up on my end at the moment but I can show you how you can look at that and then I'm going to show you this a little bit of a little background on the blood cell types we're going to cover that in lecture so I'm going to start here blood um, it is a connective tissue if you remember remember that was one of the categories we went over uh, in AMP1 as far as histology goes you got to have it for gas transport um, I mean body temperature plasma all kinds of reasons all right now there are two uh, categories of what are called white blood cells. Now, we still cover erythrocytes and uh, platelets, thrombocytes, in fact. This would have been something, I guess I might add it down here at the end. Let's see. Yeah, I'll put it somewhere down there, but what we're going to do first, uh, we cover what are called the white blood cells. So, I'm going to go to this chart. This chart represents, now this is out of lecture, okay, so this is not something you're going to be tested on in lab. You're really not going to be tested on it in lecture either, but this shows, this is the entire flow chart for blood cell formation. Here is a hemocytoblast, which is a stem cell, and remember, red bone marrow produces all blood cells. So what that means is this particular stem cell can be any of the blood cell types. If it goes this way, and you see it says myeloid stem cell, over here it says lymphoid stem cell. And then you have all the categories. Um, here's where platelets are forming. Here's where a red blood cell is forming on that end. You see it goes down here, the little biconcave disc. Here are platelets. And then on this side, over here, now, um, yeah, lymphoid or just lymphocytes, but you see these? Monoblast, here's a great term. This is called a megakaryocyte. Cool, cool term. Ends up breaking up and forming these little platelets here that uh, are involved with blood clotting. So for right now, we're worried about this category right here. Basophils, eosinophils, a neutrophil, a monocyte, and a lymphocyte and then like I said these are platelets are called thrombocytes and then this these are red blood cells all right and like just wanted to show you they all start out as one cell it has to do with hormones what body region they end up in and they can become any one of these this is from your outline for lecture so here's what we're going to cover in this class you see these up here? These are all red blood cells or erythrocytes. That little guy there is a platelet. There's another one there. There's one up here, looks like. And then all of these are white blood cells, the ones we're gonna cover. Here's a neutrophil, which is the most abundant of all the white cells. This is called an eosinophil. It looks like the little seven up guy with the shades they used to have on the side of the can. This is a basophil, bunch of blue dots. This is called a lymphocyte. And this big cell over here, which is the biggest on size, is called a monocyte. Monocytes become something called a macrophage when they get really angry. But that's a monocyte. So back to our outline. Um, what I was going to say, white blood cells have two categories. 
if you noticed on this particular diagram. Here you have these three and they're called granulocytes because they have granules in their cytoplasm. These two over here are called agranulocytes because even though it looks like they have granules, they don't. Uh, see the red and the blue and these are kind of pink. The lymphocyte monocyte cells, they're called agranulocytes because they have no granules in their cytoplasm. So you can divide them up that way in categories. So of the granulocytes, we have a neutrophil, like I said, and I'm going to jump real quickly to a picture. On our PowerPoint, it's number two here. See this guy, and it's got one, two, three, four, five. All those little lumps and everything, those are lobes on the nucleus. And a neutrophil, by definition, has anywhere from two to six lobes on its nucleus. Now I had to blow this up um, because it wasn't working. Hmm, I have two monocytes. Where's interesting? Okay, there's two eosinophils on here. Uh, here we go. This is an okay picture. See that? Well, actually, that's a really good one. That is a neutrophil. Here are platelets. There, these are all red blood cells or erythrocytes. They're the most abundant in this picture. But that's a neutrophil. See, though, you can count one, two, three, four. There's five lobes. It looks, I know it looks like it's all disjointed, but it's actually a nucleus. And they are the most abundant of all the white cells. They are little Pac Man cells. What they do is they eat other cells. So their function is called phagocytosis of microbes. I mean, they are Pac Man cells. Um, and I'll do this in lecture there's a video on youtube you can google you just google uh neutrophil chasing bacteria and it shows them going around and eating some bacteria in a microscope slide all right so those are neutrophils this picture that's a pretty good one that's a big one all of these are white blood cells and that little guy right there is most likely a platelet uh it almost looks like a smudge but oh well and so is that, but anyway, so that's a neutrophil. Next up, our next contestant is called an eosinophil. Uh, they do kind of stain a red color and they have a bilobed nucleus. Now, they do two things. Their, their count goes up during an allergic reaction, but they also attack parasitic worm infections. So if somebody has a tapeworm, they're going to have a very high count of eosinophils. So like it says there, defend against parasitic worm infections and um, moderate allergic reactions. That's what they do. Now this is one of the pictures I'm not that proud of because the person's, this poor guy's sunglasses are broken. This is actually an eosinophil. See the two big lobes and it would have gone across. It's broken there. But uh, the color's not great, but that's an eosinophil. Now, that being said, on your Padlet, on your, um, on our web page, on our uh, lab page, that is a perfect eosinophil. See it? It's kind of got the red granules. It has the shades, the bilobe nucleus. There's some platelets. And then all of these are all erythrocytes. They're all red blood cells. All right, so that's an eosinophil. So going back, a basophil. These are the least abundant of all of the white blood cells. They're less than 1%. And what they do, they cause swelling and inflammation. Right here it says they migrate to damaged tissues. They release histamine, which actually causes swelling. And they also release a chemical called heparin, which is an anticoagulant. So it increases blood flow. Now, once again, this is not, what well, it's not that one, it's this one. See that little guy there? Um, 
That most likely is a base of fill, some of the greatest pitcher. Base of fills look like a bunch of blue dots. So I'm going to go back to our Padlet. Let me get out of this. Here is a perfect, perfect base of fill. See the bunch of blue dots? You really can't even see the nucleus. It kind of has a double lobe nucleus, but you really can't see it because it's a whole bunch of blue dots. There's a platelet. Like I said, these are all red blood cells or erythrocytes. But that's a basophil. So those three are granulocytes. They have granules in their cytoplasm. The agranulocytes, there's only two of these we cover. They're lymphocytes and monocytes. Here's a monocyte, big giant Pac-Man cell. They also, see down here it says they become macrophages. They move in and out of tissues and they eat anything they don't recognize. They phagocytize bacteria, dead cells, parts, everything. And they're the biggest one as far as size goes. Now, I was looking, oh, okay. This is actually a really good, in our PowerPoint slide, that's a really good monocyte. A lot of times they have this little horseshoe nucleus. Here are the red cells that look kind of ruffled. All those are platelets. And I'm gonna go back to our uh, padlet. Okay. Well, <laughs> It's labeled right there, but that's a that's also a great monocyte. See how big it is? It's the size of, look at that, like five red blood cells. So as far as size goes, they're the biggest ones. There's some platelets, and there's some red cells. And like I said, they are big, giant. They're like neutrophils. They're not quite as abundant, but um, they're the biggest in size. They kind of move in at the end of an infection and they just take out everything. All right, lymphocytes. Now we're going to cover a whole section on this in the lymphatic system. They have a little bitty ring of kind of whitish cytoplasm and a big purple nucleus. And they're, oddly enough, these are really uh, talked about a lot now with this whole coronavirus outbreak. They're involved with what's called specific immunity. That means that they only attack whatever their stimulus is. When you get vaccinated, your body produces what are called B cells and T cells. Those are lymphocytes. If you have gotten sick from something, if you've had a viral infection, you're going to get lymphocytes, B cells and T cells from, from that infection. I got chicken pox as a kid. I have in my body B cells and T cells, very specific for chicken pox. That's why I didn't get it again. And T cells are 80% of specific immunity and B cells are 20%. So we're going to definitely talk about that later. But it's called specific immunity because they only attack whatever their stimulus is that they were produced from. A monocyte, if it doesn't recognize you, you're dead. It's not specific. Neutrophils up here, if they don't recognize you, they're going to attack you. So they are non-specific. It doesn't matter what it is. Anything foreign. A B cell and T cell are very specific. They're only going to, if you get vaccinated for tetanus, you're going to get very specific B cells and T cells for tetanus. And they get stored all over your body and your lymphatic system. And then if you ever got cut by a rusty nail or something and you got tetanus, now you have some immunity to it. So... This is not a bad, I was kind of beating this, well, that's, that's just a picture of red cells, but um, you have to get a really good look at this picture. A little dark, I don't know why some of my pictures are like that, but here's the purple nucleus, and there's the little white layer of cytoplasm on the outside, and you can see they're about this, a little bit bigger than a red cell, so they're not very big. On our Padlet that I've been using for class, this is a perfect one. It's a perfect lymphocyte. See the round purple nucleus and there's the little outside ring of cytoplasm. And there's a red cell. Uh, I don't know if I, that's a platelet or not, but you can see they're not as big as, as a monocyte. 
Okay, so you have to be able to identify those by a picture and then know what they do. Yeah, I know if they're a granulocyte or an agranulocyte. So, oops, to go back, and this is where we are. All right, I'm going to stop there and I'll make a video on the whole blood typing and blood identification. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold Sets up.